Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I hope everybody is staying safe uh, in these trying coronavirus times. In this video, I want to talk about a recent report that just came out from the WMO, the World Meteorological Organization. Uh, the report is called The Global Climate in 2015 to 2019. So they do five-year segments and they look at all the different parameters of the climate system and compare them to uh, the previous five-year period, but also go back in time. So it's a good overall summary of the uh, dire uh, situation that we're in with uh, abrupt climate change. So let me get right into the report. There's a lot of figures, there's a lot of content, and uh, it's, it's very good. So if you just Google the, go the global climate in 2015 to 2019, uh, WMO, World Meteorological Organization. This is the report that they have. So basically, I'll go through some of the key uh, figures in the report. So of course, 2015 to 2019 was the warmest five-year period, 0 0.2 degrees Celsius higher than the previous period, the 2011 to 2015 period. Th this, is, this is huge. So, you know, it used to be typically that um, global average temperature would be rising about 0.2 degrees Celsius over, you know, a decadal, a 10-year period. But in this case, the, the five-year period was, exceeded the previous five-year period by 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. 2016 was the warmest year on record, over one degree Celsius higher than the pre-industrial period. Okay, now they define the pre-industrial period here as 1850 to 1900, and they should really, so it's 1.1 degrees, uh, and you need to add 0 0.3 to take it back to 1750, which was the um, original baseline for the um, climate talks, you know, the two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial, 1.5 above pre-industrial. Pre-industrial was 1750 in the original baseline. So I'll talk about the details um, of, of the plots and things as I get into the document. CO2 uh, for the five-year period, 2015 to 2018 in this case, averaged 404 parts per million, okay? On a yearly basis is pushed past uh, 415 on its way to 420. Methane, CH4, 1856 parts per billion, and nitrous oxide, N2O, 330 parts per billion. The oceans are getting more acidic. The oceans are warming and setting record levels for ocean heat content. This is in the top 700 meters, I believe. Sea level rise is uh, continuing, and, and it's got an exponential rise here. The glaciers around the world, the mass of the glaciers is, it's, they're losing mass quickly. This is the uh, mass change over the years. And extreme events, of course, are taking off in frequency, amplitude, uh, duration, and they're happening places they never happened before. Um, so there's been lots of extreme events, and, and this document looks at some of the economic losses, but also the, the human uh, deaths and mortalities from these extreme events. So I'm going to get right into the figures here, because like I said, there's, there's quite a few. Okay, so greenhouse gases, um, CO2 emissions from 2015 to 2019 exceeded about 208 gigatons. That's over the five-year period. The previous five-year period was 200 gigatons. Um, the, uh, so the, the, here, here's the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. Um, this is the curve where you can see the breathing of the Earth, essentially, the up and down um, fluctuations on, a, on an annual basis. Okay, so we get, we're, we're still rapidly rising. Here's a methane curve. It flattened out here in 2007 it started to increase strongly and uh, nitrous oxide here uh, looks pretty linear to me the growth in those greenhouse gases now if you look at the co2 concentration um, 2015 to 2018 average 404.2 the previous period 
uh, 395.5. So, so the um, you can see the gain, the uh, 2015 to 2018 gain percentage to pre-industrial, 145%, seat methane 257%, and N2O 122% rise. Um, and you can see the growth rate. So in, the, in this period, the 2015 to 2018 period, 2.5 parts per million per year versus 2.2 in the previous period. So that's an 18% increase. Methane increase was nine, that's parts per billion. Uh, the previous period was 7.2. So that's a 21% increase, even bigger than CO2 and nitrous oxide had a slight drop. Now, if you look at the global temperature, the five-year running mean of global temperature, um, this is for five different uh, data sets, and you can see um, now they take the zero as the average between about 1850 and 1900 or so. Remember, you need to add 0 0.3 to that, 0 0.3 Celsius to take the baseline back to 1750. And you can see the rise of the different uh, data sets. So there's some variation, but they seem to be converging and they're all rising uh, sharply upwards. Okay, uh, 2015 to 2019, the average global temperature was 1.1 degrees Celsius warmer than pre-industrial, as they define, as I mentioned, 1850 to 1900. Okay, um, 0.21 degrees warmer than the average for the previous five-year period. Okay, now on the continents, it's warmer. So these are continental temperature anom anomalies relative to 1981 to 2010. Okay, that's the zero point here. Uh, but anyway, you can look at the trends. You can see that the temperature has rise has been largest over Europe. Huge temperature rise over Europe and over Asia is next here, and we Oceania is, is down here at the bottom, and we have the other continent somewhere up in, you know, up sort of tied here. So, so this is the temperature over the continents, and, you know, we know there's been tremendous heat waves in Europe, so, you know, this, uh, that's sort of corroborated by, by this uh, plot here. Okay, his, here is the uh, distribution. This is the five-year average temperature anomalies relative to the 1981 to 2010 average. Okay, these are monthly anomalies. And you can see, you know, look at the Arctic regions here, um, you know, approaching 10 degrees Celsius temperature anomaly. We have a cooling spot here south of Greenland. I've talked about that many times in the past, and there's some cooling spots down here. But you know, the higher up you go into the Arctic, the higher the warming is. As you know, probably Siberia is, is, has tremendously high temperatures, drying out things and priming the region for huge uh, wildfires coming this coming summer, especially with the shuttering of lots of industry and air flights, etc., from the coronavirus. Thus, the aerosols in the atmosphere are much lower, so we would expect you know, over some regions to, you know, have record high temperatures this year, although it's hard to pull that signal out exactly. There will be a lot of studies coming out, I think, soon on that. This is the um, global mean sea level. Of course, the ocean sea level is rising. This is the trend, the average trend, 3.24 millimeters per year. And, but you can see an exponential increase here, okay? Um, and if you get the breakdown here as to where that sea level is rising, so this is a 20, 2007 to 2016 period, sea level rise of 4.36 millimeter per year, okay? So that's in the last, you know, decade. It's much, much higher growth here. You, see, you can see the, cur the slope is coming up here. So thermal expansion contributed 1.47 millimeters per year. Ocean, hotter ocean, water expands, glaciers, um, not, this is, well, Greenland, 0.93, Antarctica, 0.47. These are glaciers on mountains, and then land water runoff into the ocean. Now compare this to the previous decade, 
sea level rise was 3.04, you know, as opposed so a huge rise in sea level, thermal expansion. So if you, if you compare, you know, this was thermal expansion in the previous period, the glaciers, you know, similar so, sort of sizes of the pie. This is larger than, th th this is, the numbers are higher, but this was a larger fraction of the total. And of course, look at Antarctica, you know, from going from here, 0.05 millimeters per year from 1997 to 2006 to 0.47 millimeters per year, a huge growth, you know, almost a 10 times growth in the Antarctic uh, contribution to, to sea level rise, increase here in Greenland, uh, more than double, glaciers, uh, you know, large increase. Okay, so sea level is rising rapidly and a lot of heat is going into the ocean. This heat going into the ocean is contributing to the thermal expansion component of sea level rise that I showed there. Um, this is three different studies and you can see the huge rise in, um, in heat that is going into the ocean, increasing the temperature and this is in the zero to 700 meter layer. This is relative to the 1981 to 2010 baseline Okay, in terms of uh, ocean acidification, this is the pressure, uh, partial pressure of CO2. Uh, micro atmospheres, this is 10 to the minus 6, basically, or parts per million is another way of putting it. And you can see the rise, there's more and more CO2 in the water, and that creates carbonic acid, and that lowers the pH. So the pH of the ocean, so this shows the ocean acidification rates. Um, this is, of course, the Arctic and uh, Antarctic uh, ice. So the growing, the ice grows. This is the, the this is March, where the ice is uh, maximum in the Arctic, and you can see that the the uh, there's a large percentage reduction here. You know, up to about seven percent reduction of the extent of Arctic uh, sea ice at maximum. And Antarctica was increasing, but recently it's had a large drop. And this is the sea ice minimum, both for um, the Arctic and Antarctic. So Arctic still going down quickly. You know, the huge heat domes up in the Arctic right now go to Earth Null School and have a look at some of the temperatures in the Arctic over the next few weeks. And there's times when almost the entire Arctic Ocean is above zero. This is air temperature just above the surface. And, uh, you know, Greenland is the only sort of center of cold. And I talked about how that can affect the jet streams and, in, in my view, uh, shift them so that they rotate around Greenland as opposed to uh, closer to the North Pole. And there's quite a bit of variation in the minimum in the, the Antarctic. And you can see this, this variation uh, here, you know, lots of fluctuation, you know, big, big, big drops. This is uh, the Greenland, the surface mass balance. So uh, this is meet loss of the thickness of the ice meters per year. Um, okay, uh, da, 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 da. the uh, average surface mass balance. Okay, so this, is, uh, this was in the 1986 to 2005 period. And you can see there's more and more, so some ice lost around the edge, but some growth in the cent in, in, in the southern parts, not much, a kind of a push in the middle. And then you can see more and more red appearing. This is 2015 to 2019, and this is the last season, the 2018 to 2019 season. So lots of ice loss. Um, and this is, these are glaciers, these are non-Greenland, um, non-Antarctica glaciers, mostly on mountains. So this is the mass change rate. This is so you can see the acceleration downwards as more and more glaciers on land um, uh, melt away. This is the uh, spring snow cover, which is a big factor in changing the albedo of the Arctic. So this is the area of coverage, 10 to the six uh, square kilometers. And you can see the, the drop off here. And this is in the spring, and this primes the um, region for large uh, amounts of sea ice melt. 